Good morning everyone and welcome to the ODPP Cafe. My name is Anita Onuko. I'm your host for the show. The show is brought to you by the Office of the Director of Public Prosecution and we're live on Facebook at the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions Kenya. We are also on Twitter. You can follow us and engage with us. We are at ODPP underscore KE. We are on YouTube as well and we're live there at the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions Kenya. Karibu sana to the show once again. I know it's a cold morning, but uh, let's engage in some interesting talk that is quite uh, topical in the season we are in, that is the election period. This show is meant to sensitize you. The show is meant to educate and inform you about some matters in the criminal justice system, mostly from the ODPP's perspective, but sometimes we encourage also to, we also bring in partners from other, from the industry, from the sector to come in uh, and also join us in the conversation. So today's topic is about electoral justice. We want to, uh, election, uh, sorry, hate speech, election and hate speech. We want to look at the definitions and the ingredients so that you're well informed about what hate speech is, uh, what, how to identify what hate speech is when you're in a crowd, how do you pick out what is hate speech and what is not, and of course now how to interact with the, with the lawyers when it comes to, re, to, to prosecuting uh, hate speech cases. As always and before we go into our discussion, I'm going to take you through a bit of the highlights from the courts, just highlights, not everything, just a bit of the things that came out in the courts today. And I will start with the first story or the first case from Siaya County. So in Siaya, there's a man who has been charged, uh, a, a man charged after his friend filmed him assaulting a woman. A man who was filmed beating a woman in Nyadorera, Siaya County, was charged with assault on Tuesday. Mr. Justice Oduoro Kong denied the charges before Siaya Magistrate Margaret Wamban, but the magistrate granted the parties the option of settling the matter out of court with the area chief asked to report the outcome to the court. So uh, that was a case in Siaya about some guy who was uh, filmed assaulting a woman and looks like they've been given the option of settling this case out of court. Um, Miss Immaculate Akinyi, whose beating was captured on a video that circulated on social media, said Mr. Oduor assaulted her as a friend of his recorded the cruelty on a mobile phone. Mr. Akinyi reported the incident to the Nyadorera police station, police post, before seeking medical attention. Mr. Odor went on the run after the video of the assault went viral on social media. He was arrested by the police in Nakuru and brought to Siaya to face assault charges. The case will be heard again on 19th of July. So we'll still follow up and see how that goes. Uh, the next case is about uh, five Ethiopians who were found in Kenya illegally. Uh, they are getting six months in jail for illegal entry. Uh, the court in Maralal Court on Wednesday sentenced five Ethiopians to six months in prison after they were found guilty of being in Kenya illegally. The foreigners who spoke neither English nor Swahili pleaded guilty through an Amharic interpreter. They told the court that they were heading to Nairobi to find work. Uh, the senior principal magistrate John Tamar from Maralal found the five guilty of being in Kenya without um, valid permits and passports. So... Uh, these people were found in Maralal and uh, looks like they either pay some money or they're going to jail for six months for this. So they were directed to be repatriated to Ethiopia after serving their sentences. Uh, they were fined 30,000 shillings each or six months in prison after which they go back to Ethiopia. They were among 14 immigrants detained by police. The other nine were from Eritrea and were sent to the UNHCR in Nairobi for possible registration as refugees. So the next case is about a Chinese man. Uh, he was accused of assaulting and robbing a compatriot with a knife over a three million shilling. I think it's a debt, but this is yet to be uh, to be decided yet. So Guo Song had been contracted to supply sand and other construction materials to a company where his compatriot, um, I think, uh, one someone from his country as well, Rong King Tao, was working. He's accused of invading Tao's bedroom where he attacked him using. A kitchen knife so the chinese robbed a friend of five thousand uh, using a knife he will know his fate on 29th of july according to the court documents Gu was stormed into tao's house on march 8 2018 at south b with other accomplices who were not in court and robbed him of his knife worth five thousand so it's a knife that was stolen sorry about the miscommunication there the matter was adjourned until 29th july uh, when the judgment will be delivered 
Two police officers attached to Kamkunji Police Station have been charged with corruptly receiving 5,000 so as to assist a trader recover a 25,000 shilling debt. Corporal Grace Wangare Maina and Constable James Karoma Thomas were arraigned before Milimani Anti-Corruption Court Chief Magistrate Thomas Nzioki. So two police officers are on the spot for accepting a 5K bribe. The duo denied receiving the money from George Shege Kiaru at Kamkunji Police Station on 23rd January 2019. They allegedly received the cash to enable them assist Kiaru to recover a 25,000 from a motor vehicle spare parts broker. Uh, the defense lawyer Dunstan Omari applied to have the two officers released on bond. Zioki ordered each of the officers to, be, to, to deposit a cash bail of 50,000. So the DPP approved the charges against Mr. Mura Awad for the death of his wife. These are murder charges. After the police finalized investigating the death that occurred on June 19th at Kanamai, Kikambala, Kilifi County, Mr. Awad was arrested over the gruesome murder of his 29-year-old wife, Nuru Ibrahim, after a domestic squabble. The victim was found stabbed to death in the couple's house. Uh, the police forwarded the file to the DPP for approval after finalizing investigations. Um, last week, Shanzu Principal Magistrate Yusuf Shikanda allowed the police to hold the suspect as they recorded statements from the suspect's children who are key witnesses in the case. The police also used the 14 days to take the suspect for mental assessment and to obtain the post-mortem report. The detective had told the court that the suspect was likely to interfere with the witnesses and his children should he be released before their statements are recorded. So that is just a highlight from the courts. Uh, like I say, it's never exhaustive. Just a few cases that we picked that maybe uh, you didn't get to see or uh, you missed the news when they were announced. So today, like I said, we are going to talk about hate speech. We're in the season of elections and it is time we sort of sensitize ourselves, educate ourselves about these things we assume we know, but we, we don't know exhaustively what they entail and what it means to engage in hate speech. So with me today are two learned gentlemen, and I'm going to allow them to uh, introduce themselves. They are going to talk to us about hate speech, what the law says, the offenses, and all that entails uh, hate speech in this season. So I want to welcome you, Mr. James. Just introduce yourself and tell us uh, who you are and what you do. Thank you very much. My name is James Opundo. Um, My name is Peter Muya. I'm a prosecution counsel based in the uh, Okay. Karibu sana. So today we want to talk about hate speech. And like I said, we are to look at this document. Uh, there's a quick reference guide on key definitions and ingredients of hate speech and ethnic contempt under the National Cohesion and Integration Act 2008. So maybe I'll start with you, James. Why are we looking at this under the ambit of the NCIC Act 208? Y uh, yes. Uh, <coughs> you know, after the processes which led to the formation of the... NCIC, the, the coming of the law, yeah. because of uh, what the history that we have undergone. We, it was uh, felt, I believe, that the, the parliament was of the view that it will be captured because NCIC as it is the one which is mandated to investigate and follow up and find out the, what leads to hate among the citizens. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, it's, it's captured under the Act and all the definitions are put there. Though we know there are other legal regimes mm -hmm. which supplement, including the Constitution. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. All right, so before you got to get to the definition of hate speech, maybe uh, just take us to the mandate of the ODPP period. Has it changed? Because you are in this season. <laughs> <laughs> the, the mandate has not changed mm -hmm. uh, of the seven where we get our mandate. And uh, basically because it's a pre period of, it's an election period, mm -hmm. uh, we have to highlight election offenses. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, that's why we also need to talk about hate speech in particular, mm -hmm. because we, we know that uh, during this period, mm -hmm. there's a lot of campaigning going on. There's a lot of uh, uh, lobbying going on uh, with, uh, involving politicians. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are likely to get these uh, offenses uh, happening because of the campaigns and the rallying. Mm -hmm. um, it's important to sensitize citizens 
and also the politicians themselves so that we prevent uh, these politicians from uh, perpetuating the hate speech offense. Yeah. The DPP was under fire when he announced that he's going to prioritize, the ODP is going to prioritize election uh, cases, election offenses cases. Has there been a rise since the, have, have you seen a rise in these election offenses cases in court? Oh, well, uh, they are there, they've been found. Mm. So was he right yeah. in prioritizing? He was right. Mm. Maybe he was right because of the electoral period. Yeah. Mm. Giving priority is not putting other cases aside because other cases are also going. Yeah. But it's just to realize that you know these cases need to be prosecuted yeah. in time, yeah. in real time. Yes. And justice is because it yeah. without if they are not prosecuted or even be seen to be investigated, yeah. people yeah. will lose mm -hmm. confidence in the democratic yeah. processes. Yeah. Ah, okay. Okay, so um, I like talking about two things ever in this show. The justice system and how it works. Because you see, like I was saying earlier, you see people saying uh, DPP Shikawao, DPP Investigate Wale. So maybe just for the benefit of someone joining us today, are you able to just explain to us how the criminal justice system works? And again, it goes back to mandate. Who does what? Yes. And we are very clear now that that has not changed in this period. Yes. Um, uh, of course, you know that... Uh, Justice involves uh, the justice actors. Yeah. We have the judiciary, we have the investigating bodies, and now we have the ODP. Yeah. Um, so where does it start? It starts integrity. from the hmm? from the investigative. Yes, it yeah. starts from the investigating uh, investigative bodies, um, who must carry out uh, their functions and uh, present a file that meets the threshold mm -hmm. to the office of the ODPP. Yeah. And then the ODPP now takes over from there, presents the file to the judiciary, yeah. and uh, now the process Continuous. keeps on rolling. Yeah, ah, okay, quite, quite, quite a thing. Because people are really confused how this thing works. So, unaskia, mbona DCIC, prosecute, mbona. So there's always that ping pong. People really uh, rarely get it, but I hope now as we talk about this often, that people get to understand how the justice system works. Yes. So it starts from the investigative, it goes to the prosecution, judiciary, and then prisons. Yes. And everybody has their own mandate. Yes. Even in this season. Even in this Even season. Even in this season. Yes. Yeah. So maybe then we get into maybe, the definition. Maybe just to add, you know, the yes. constitution, the current constitution of yeah. Kenya 2010, allows the DPP to give direction to the ah. IG yeah. to yeah. carry when this information which he has received concerning commission of an offense. But that does not mean that the, the DPP or the ODPP or staff go into real investigation. Mm. They only advise. So is that the prosecution-led investigation? The guided? Guided, yes. yes. What's the um, difference when I say led and guided? <laughs> there's no difference. There's no difference really. Eh? Yeah. Um, we just said either prosecution-led or prosecution-led guided. Guided investigations. Uh, okay. Mm. okay. I think it's in the English. <laughs> it's, it's in the yeah. <laughs> so in certain jurisdictions yeah. they would prefer lead oh prefer guided ah, okay so then what is hate speech uh, hate speech is basically the use of threatening mm -hmm. abusive or insulting words mm -hmm. that is hate speech mm -hmm. um, um, that's the basic uh, definition and uh, um um, anybody can, I think anybody can uh, be involved in hate speech. Yeah. Um, you can, you can pronounce uh, insulting words, that is hate speech. Yeah. You can publish insulting words, that is hate speech. Yeah. You can threaten someone, that is hate speech. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, okay, okay. Interesting. And Mr. James, then, um, there's a very thin line between freedom of speech, because we live in times of freedoms. We recognize our freedoms. Freedom of speech and hate speech, where do you draw the line? You know, the, our constitution mm -hmm. guarantees freedom of speech, but has also put a restriction for good reasons. Mm -hmm. I would take, for example, freedom of expression should not be used to injure the right of another person. Ah, yes. okay, okay. So you should exercise your freedom of speech mm -hmm. 
responsible mm -hmm. and in tandem with the law. Mm -hmm. So that's why we even have the hate speech. Because we have seen too, when the freedom of expression is not controlled, mm -hmm. we will have people will definitely think that they can even carry out mm -hmm. hate speeches. Yeah. Can you, is it, is it not a moral issue, this hate speech then? Is it about morals? I, yes, you can, you, can, you can say it's about morals also. Yeah. Uh, because uh, definitely when you insult some, somebody, you are going to use bad words. Yeah. Uh, that's an issue of morals. Have we, have we as a country or as a people gone so low that now we are trying to regulate morals? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Have um, the religious? Have the, uh, do you think religion has a has a has a has a place to play in this hate speech? All this this whole hate speech space because, like you're mm. saying, it's just you getting out of your way and bad manners, yeah, and you insult you someone insult. or you incite violence. Don't you think it's the moral issue? It's just morals gone wrong. I think in Kenya we have a, a problem because we had tribal issue. Yeah that ethnicity that uh, is so tribalized the mm -hmm. country mm -hmm. and that's why we you find that the, there are people mm -hmm. who want to appeal to the emotion with the emotions of tribe so that they can achieve what they want mm -hmm. against each other so that has been the problem also in the political field political yeah. direction yeah. like during elections People want to whip those emotions on the members of the public too. And it ends up creating animosity mm -hmm. between tribes, between... Yeah. Is it a problem with the people or with the leaders? Because when mm -hmm. we sit here, we say we want to know what the leaders are bringing on the table, their manifestos. We speak very intelligently about things like manifesto, policies. Mm -hmm. But then, why do we entertain them out there? You see, um, people say that... Uh, Leadership is a reflection of the people. So basically, <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's a problem with the people with the generally. People. Yes. Oh, wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So now we need to talk about the reference, this reference guide that um, the ODPP has produced. And I want to believe uh, you've had a look at it. It has some definitions. Again, it's still under the ambit of the National Cohesion and Integration Act 208. Yes. And it talks about the offenses under hate speech. And it says, a person who uses threatening, abusive, or insulting words or behavior or displays any written material, publishes or distributes written material, presents or directs a performance of the public, performance of a play. I think I didn't get that in the definition. What does it mean when it says, the person presents or directs a performance of the public performance of a play? What is that? What's performance of a play? Uh, performance of a play, it, it can be... You can look at it from a theatrical perspective. Ah. Uh, when you have a, a play or a, a film yeah. that is uh, insightful mm. or uh, that that really uh, stirs the emotions of the people. Okay. Yes. All right. Uh, so we need to look at now the decision to charge. Uh, we always have to talk about it because it is one of those things that separates the mandates of these agencies. So how do you make the decision to charge in election of like hate speech cases? How do you determine that now you are there or you are not there? What do you look at, um, Mr. Jim? Yes, uh, just like the guide, uh, guidelines which we have in making decision in yeah. every other case, yeah. we apply what is called the two test stage. Mm -hmm. So basically, what we are talking about is that there must be sufficient evidence first mm -hmm. for you to charge even this hate speech yeah. or even other electoral offenses. Mm -hmm. Then you move from there, you move to the issue of public interest. Yeah. Are they not all in public interest, these hate speech cases? Because from, from if you look at it from, um, from how it has played out in countries like Rwanda, hate speech alone has caused mm -hmm. genocide. Yeah. So do you look at all hate speech cases as those of public interest or in the interest of the public? I don't even know which one I'm asking. <laughs> yeah. it, it, it's both in the interest of the public and the public, public interest. interest. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Uh, because they, the, the, the impact is really 
uh, engraved or wide. Yes. Yes. Actually, you know, the law is created mm -hmm. based on public policy. Yeah. yeah. So it emanates from a public policy. At the end mm -hmm. of the day, what you look at, that is this in the interest. Yes. Public. Yeah. Because of the public policy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, you're taking us through the two-stage test. Mm -hmm. So there's the evidentiary test. Yes. And so in the evidentiary test, what do you look at? Like in hate speech. Yes. In hate speech cases, cases. yeah. In it, you must look at if there was actual use of those threatening mm -hmm. or insulting or mm -hmm. abusive words. Yeah. Which are likely to stop. Uh, interfere with the public, general the view of the public. Yeah. That is this something which is likely to incite uh, or create hatred mm -hmm. amongst the people, among the masses. Mm -hmm. So that's how you look at it. You look at the evidence. Mm -hmm. Is this evidence? Was these things actually uttered? Were the words actually uttered? Mm -hmm. So that evidence must come out clearly. Mm -hmm. It must come out from uh, Eyewitnesses comes out from those people who had speaking, giving direct evidence yeah. that we had so and so say this yeah. on this particular day. Mm. Then there are also those clips. Yeah. Yeah. Is there? So is is hate speech just about tribe? Not really. No. Mm. It's not about. Tribe. But I think because of the Kenyan background, we always see hate speech first of all from a point of tribe. Tribe. But I think our election system are different. Yes, our election systems are different, yeah. um, and I think uh, the reason why we tend to associate hate speech with tribe mm -hmm. is because of uh, our past. Yes. Uh, you know, of course, the 2007 post-election violence, uh, many people attribute it to tribe. Yeah. And uh, insightful words were, were triggered against communities mm. or tribe. Mm. Is it different this time, James, because uh, the election landscape is totally changing? Those who could not scale the mountains are scaling the mountains. Those who could not go to the lake are going to the lake. Those who could not go to the rift are going to the rift freely. So are we still looking at hate speech from the, from the, from the angle or the, 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 the purview of tribe? I think uh, it is still there. Is the still political there. culture has not altered okay. or transformed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it is still there a bit. Mm -hmm. You could even hear it, mm. that people mm. were saying we cannot do this, yeah. we cannot do this, yeah. these are a zone and all that kind of yeah. thing. So yeah. you cannot overrule it. Mm -hmm. But what we have to admit is that some of the political, there's a lot of people who have started tolerating each other. Mm. Yeah. You think it's lessons from 2007, 2008? Yeah, yes. from the past. Yeah. You see even our leaders, are, when they utter, or politician, let me use, when they utter certain things and it is called to question, yeah. they easily deny. Mm -hmm. Not unlike before when people used to thumb chest, you know, yeah. say. Or well, they even ask for forgiveness yes. now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But is it mm -hmm. still a case of masses need to be educated, like you were saying, James, earlier? Are we still not getting it? Because we are the ones entertaining this, this, this just bad speech. And like, like Peter says, it is all about a reflection of... <laughs> Of the leaders we have, yeah, there, there's still need for continuous mass training, civic education. Yeah, more so on the values which are in Article Ten, and we also need people, the members of the public. You find that uh, Chapter Six, they've not imbibed, they've not taken it to heart so yeah. much such that there's still room for this, our leaders mm. to influence them on a certain direction which is not as far mm. the law. Mm. Yeah. So it, you think now chapter six is on us as citizens? <laughs> because I think at the beginning of the election period, we were all saying, don't vet, don't, yeah. uh, what is it called? Don't, mm. allow don't allow them on the ballot. Mm. But now they are on the ballot. So what has remained of chapter six, Peter? <laughs> <laughs> What has <laughs> remained of Chapter 6? The whole, the action, the intentions have all been mutilated. So well, what has we, remained? We have really tried. <laughs> we have really tried to, <laughs> to implement Chapter 6. Yeah. Um, but, uh, well, of course, there, there are those uh, gaps or loopholes. Yeah. Um, now that throws the ball back to the people. Uh, if you know that your leader 
the person that is on the ballot box uh, has integrity issues, why would you want to vote for him? Sini mtu wetu. Si ametoka kwetu. Yes. So I think for the benefit of the people watching us, chapter 6 is about uh, leadership, leadership and, and integrity. Yes. And it is what we've been talking about. Don't uh, allow uh, people with a tainted past, especially mm. corruption cases in court, or those who have been impeached to not okay. be on the ballot. But looks like, again, most have circumvented the law and are on the ballot. So what remains mm. of chapter 6, uh, like Peter okay. and James are saying, is for us as citizens to still exercise our power on the ballot. So we are still on this um, uh, decision to charge and we're looking at witness statements and they're talking about proof of targeted community, group or person, proof of using threatening, abusive or insulting words or behavior or display of any materials, publication or distribution of, ma of written material, proof of utterance. How do you prove utterance? It's recorded. It's recorded. It can be through our voice recordings, mm -hmm. our phone recordings. Yes. Ah, okay. All right. Then now we go to electronic evidence. And I think this is the one that for me is quite, uh, it needs a lot of uh, fleshing out. So for electronic evidence, and these are the essential requirements for prosecution, file, and decision to charge. So for a prosecution file, you must have this, right? Yes. So when they talk about electronic evidence in this booklet, they say that electronic recordings, Certificates of electronic evidence to ascertain the integrity of the process of handling electronic evidence. What does that even mean? That when you say ascertain the integrity of the process of handling electronic evidence, what does that mean, James? You know, this, you know, with the issues of the digital world, yeah. somebody can manipulate the process. Mm -hmm. But if there's a certificate of somebody saying, I'm the one who handled this. What's I'm a certificate? Like an affidavit? I signed something? No. No, yeah. it's a, just to certify. I certify that this thing went through this process. Okay. The extraction of the evidence yeah. went through this process. I used this gadget, and this was the result. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, basically, it's just um, maintaining the admissibility of that mm -hmm. evidence. Uh, ensuring that the integrity break that down a bit Ma maintaining the admissibility what does that mean in simple simple simple, simple english <laughs> yes yes this electronic evidence must be able to be used in court and uh, it it also must not be uh, if if somebody decides to challenge the evidence the integ the integrity of that evidence must be able to be ascertained mm basically it's just being able to use the evidence yeah. in court yeah. and uh, produce it yeah. the, the process must be ascertainable and the reason why we say that uh, to ensure integrity of them is because to, have, to rule out if there was any interference mm. or if something was done illegally mm. in the process of extracting, oh, oh, extracting it so they talk about devices, equipment used to record. Why does it matter what gadget is used? Uh, it, it does. <laughs> Why does it matter? It was recorded. It, it, it does. Mm. Uh, it goes back to what you are talking about, the integrity. Uh, many be, uh, you realize that uh, when it comes to technology or electronic evidence, it's easy to manipulate. These days, we, you, you find that uh, you can, what people normally say, um, Photoshop. Photoshop, yes. Mm. Photoshop. Mm. You can easily manipulate the evidence. Mm. Mm. So you need to to really show that this evidence was not manip manipulated. It is in its original form. Mm. So what if I record you secretly? That can also be used. It can be used? Y yes, it can be used as evidence. So when you talk about electronic evidence, I saw something in this book that talked about the checklist on admissibility of electronic and digital evidence. So they define electronic evidence, um, electronic or digital evidence is any probative, I don't even know what that means, <laughs> information stored or transmitted in digital form that a party to court may use at trial. So examples are emails, digital photographs, word processing documents, instant messaging history, internet browser histories, oh, databases. 
I don't know whether you're getting this, guys. So they say examples of electronic evidence are emails, digital photographs, word processing documents, instant message history. That's what's up. Mm. And the likes, Telegram. But Telegram. there are those that just self-combust. These in And uh, But <laughs> they can be retrieved. Oh. <laughs> yes. And then internet browser histories. I felt like reading that twice. Internet browser histories. <laughs> <laughs> Databases, content of computer memory and computer backup. Electronic record is information that is produced by a computer. It shall be deemed to be a document. Whoa. So there's a checklist and points to note in the, when you're looking at uh, digital evidence. Electronic evidence uh, is digital footprints left after every digital activity form a cyber trail. So whatever you do online. Yes, it has a footprint. Even whatever if I delete. Do, even if you delete. It can be retrieved. <laughs> okay. Um, all electronic evidence is admissible even if the content is not in its original form. What does that mean? Uh, that means that even secondary evidence. What I'll is secondary evidence? Seconda <laughs> um, I'll give an example. Eh? Yeah. Um, you can, you can uh, get, uh, let's say, uh, a, a, a recording, an original recording, and then that recording is recorded in another device. Now so that that's secondary that's evidence. That other device, the evidence now it will be obtained. It will be secondary. Oh. That other device. Okay. It's like we say we produce the what? We ban the uh, CDs. Yes, we're producing copies. Yes. Ah, okay. You ban CDs and copy in another. Yes. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. People still use CDs. <laughs> flash disks. <laughs> flash disks. Flash yeah, yes. flash disks. Yeah, yeah. So that at the end of the day, you know, okay, well, uh, you burn it. But you find that when you are pro supposed to produce the electronic, mm -hmm. you must also produce in court the gadget you use mm. to show that it came from, from whatever you are now producing as what is called in secondary evidence must be proved that it came from the, that gadget. Also, I have to have this other gadget to yes. say, I got this from yeah, this, this gadget. Yeah. <laughs> so this one has to say, dealing with electronic evidence requires a lot of care because it is very volatile. Previewing and acquiring of data may disturb the data evidence to a point of changing its status, thus creating doubt to its credibility. Again, the movement of information from okay. one to another. Yes. Okay. Or even uh, like, for example, I've uh, taken a photograph of whatever is taking yeah. place. Then I start keying and trying to. Mm -hmm. That's why we normally, when something has been done, like for example, there's a photograph which has been taken. We take it to the expert to retrieve it. That's part there of the structure. Uh, oh. Yes. And that report must be there. And they have to f put a certificate for <sighs> that. So the investigation process involves the extraction, documentation, examination, preservation, analysis, evaluation, and interpretation of computer-based material to provide relevant and valid information as evidence. So this is not the ODPP's work, this yes. bit that I've read. Yes, that's now the part of the investigation. Mm -hmm. So the issue of certificates comes up. Certificates are required to ascertain the integrity of the process of handling electronic evidence in the case. In the case of a certificate from a translator, it is important to point out that the translator is competent in both languages and the language that is being translated and the language that is being translated to. The certificate from the cybercrime expert must contain an electronic signature. So I want us to look at the certificates that are required under section 106B. What is a certificate? Is it that hard copy that we know of? Is it what is that? Because my perception or, or my understanding of certificate, mm. it is that thing that you're given from school, certificate in DOE. So <laughs> are there certificates? Are we talking about such certificates here? Not really. Mm. It's just about certification, that confirmation that this thing was done as per mm. the law. As per the, you know, the evidence that, like the section 106, yeah. prescribed on how you're supposed to obtain that mm. evidence. The person certifying confirms that as I'm an expert and I'm the one who processed ah. the, the document. You know, all these electronics, we treat them in law as documents. Yeah. Yes. 
So the person must confirm that I'm the one who converted into a document to be produced in court. So, so it, who, nobody yeah. interfered with the process. With the process. Who brings these people to court? It's the investig the IOs who bring them to court. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. So you engage with them after they've been brought. You don't go looking for them as well. Yes, they are they're usually called to come and there's someone to come and produce the, oh, the certificates. The certificates. Mm -hmm. They are the authors, so they have to produce so that they can even be cross subjected to cross examination mm. so that they explain what they did. Mm. So I'm seeing there are six certificates. And I'm, 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 I'm wondering if this is a challenge in prosecution. So the certificate one says, certificate from the one who captured the evidence. Uh, section 106B, I don't know, 4A or something. Mm -hmm. Then two, certificate from the person who extracted and processed the evidence. So this is a cyber expert and an IT expert. Yes. So the captured ni mimi pale kwa field. Anita na simu yake. Anita na simu yake. Ame capture. Yes. Then I go back and this person from the cyber expert does what? Now extracts now from my extracts phone. Extracts from your phone. He also needs to do a certificate as a, uh, maintaining the fact that ni mature this information from Anita's phone. So let's start again. Anita records a hate speech uh, scenario mm -hmm. in a Jacaranda fields because I live here there. So Jacaranda. Mm -hmm. So I go to the police with my recording. Yes. So what happens there? Do they take my phone? They take your phone. After taking your phone, they the take phone it to is the cyber crime. presented to a cybercrime expert. That's an expert, yeah. Who extracts the relevant information. Now that recording you have done. Eh? And he also needs to prepare a certificate confirming that uh, I have extracted this information from Anita's phone. How, do, how long is that process between me taking my phone? First of all, do I trust the person I'm giving my phone? Then how long am I away from my phone? <laughs> Can I just forward you a WhatsApp message and say, like, mm, talk about prosecution-led investigation. Can I forward you a WhatsApp and say, James, I had this, skiza. No, no. <laughs> that one is now, will not keep on the, fl uh, the flow of the chain. Mm. Yeah. Because it has to be kept, that there was no interference. Because if you forward it to you, nobody will know what I've done with it. Okay, mm. yeah. So I can't, so you have to go with my phone? Yes, they have no, to They go that. with my phone, the they, police? They, yes. They have to go with your phone. And then now they will return your phone after the evidence has been <laughs> <laughs> Does that make it difficult, really? Is that not a challenge? It, it is. It is a challenge. Now, the way you're saying that uh, you will find it difficult to present your phone and leave it. Imagine that scenario. I actually come and tell, go to a police station, random police post, mm. and say, I have recorded here. Mm. It, it is a challenge. Now that <laughs> that boils down to now even the the offense itself. Yeah. If you don't want to bring that phone, how will uh, the hate speech offense be so prosecuted? So that's a challenge. But it's it what is. the law says. It's what the law the, the law says. And it's what will prove the integrity of the evidence. <laughs> so the third certificate. Now the IT expert has extracted from my phone. Then certificate from any other person who handled the evidence. So any other person in this process this first two processes. Then number four, certificate of, hand, of handing over uh, the police in respect to chain of custody. Yes. So when they take my phone, there's a certificate. Yes, they, they have to show who handled your phone, who handled this evidence. Uh, Anita gave it to Peter. Yeah. Peter gave it to James. James, okay. Certificate of transcription or translation, depending on the circumstances, at least that's clear. Then certificate from any other person occupying a responsible position in relation to the operation of the relevant device. So these are six certificates needed to admit to for an, an electronic evidence to be um, acceptable. Is that a word? The word? Yes. Admissibility. Admissibility. You guys use admissibility. <laughs> it's such a mouthful. <laughs> for it to be admissible in mm -hmm. evidence. In you know evidence. You can be for it to be used. Yes. You can produce it, but it will be rejected. Yeah. In every us. So let me ask you, James. When we see this post on Twitter, somebody has recorded a, la a rally somewhere, and they say, do you your evidence? What do you do about it? They have to report. That's why the investigation must take, must take them. The investigators must go to the source. Uh, so if I post and say, I, I, I found this video online, mm. do, do I need to take any other step? beyond posting it you need to take it to the police yes 
there has to be a complaint. Uh, mm. Oh, there has to be a, a complaint. complaint. Uh, if you look at Section 43 yeah. of the National Cohesion and Integration yeah. Act, yeah. Uh, that gives you the process. Uh, you go and complain, and uh, now from there, that is now when the investigating officer comes in. Mm. So can I take my, my evidence to NCIC and not police? Yes, you can. I can do that? Yes. Is, there, is it possible they give me another phone to use in the meantime? <laughs> 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 and you know, the, mm -hmm. the person like who recorded, yeah. did the recording, mm -hmm. is a key witness in the case. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. It's a key witness. And even his statement is required. Mm. It's recorded. Mm. Yeah. Mm. He has to state how, what he did, mm -hmm. where he was, and all that kind of thing. Okay. So still on evidence acquisition, they talk about the type of gadget. Does it fall within the definition of a computer? A phone is defined as a, is, can also fall within the definition, definition, definition of a computer. Of a, of a computer. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Does the device contain an electronic record? Is the gadget in good working conditions? Kame mm. mechapa. Kame <laughs> mechapa means that now the information will not be able to be extracted. Yeah. Were there other devices connected to the gadget if yes, where are they? Trying to imagine what this could mean. Then documentation on the process of recovery and preservation. So elements to apply in proof of electronic evidence. All notes taken during meetings and contacts that led to the investigation. So this the what led me to the police station. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Serial numbers and models of devices. Mm -hmm, interesting. Notes and any documentation made to describe the computer components, including description of peripherals and all devices. All forms used in the investigation, including the chain of custody forms, so those certificates, right? Yes. And pictures taken at the incident scene describing the scene. I'm just I want just one question from a very public from a very civilian point of view does this not make your work difficult chasing the integrity of this evidence yes. <laughs> it, it does eh? yeah it does but then uh, if you look at uh, the intention of the act mm -hmm. uh, you you'll find that uh, first of all they encourage conciliation ah. uh, in before going now to court you're encouraged to to reconcile mm -hmm. and this includes issues of apologies mm. those kind of things before yeah. we even get to this process of uh, evidence uh, and all evidence, that yes. yeah. so you can just go and say uh, is that why we see them saying nilisema lakini pole nilisema lakini pole i did not mean to <laughs> i did not <laughs> intend <laughs> to stop the sikusema weka taya nilisema taya iwekwe so James, do we have plea bargain? Does it apply in cases of hate speech? Plea bargain diversion? Yes, the law allows it in hate speech. Okay. Yeah. So you can go in and... Yeah, that's why it promotes conciliation. Oh, okay. Yes. All right. All right. Okay. So then there's something about suspect statement. Statements from suspects, cautionary statements, if any. In case of a confession, they seem to be extracted in accordance with the out-of-court confession rules. That's what you're talking about? Um... Out of court confession rules. What is that? No, no uh, confessions. There is a procedure mm -hmm. which is laid down by law mm -hmm. on how you obtain uh, confessions. Uh, so, for purposes of now using the confession in court, mm -hmm. uh, because you'll find that uh, with confessions they can invite a trial within a trial. Okay. Uh, that is to authenticate uh, the confession itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So th there has to be uh, rules on how to obtain the confession. Okay. All right. So we are saying that for you to have the file, you must have the witness statements, electronic evidence, exhibits and forensic reports, uh, cybercrime reports, report from Communication Authority of Kenya, that's CAK, uh, yes. transcripts of the recording, forensic report from social media investigator. We have those in Kenya? Uh. Social media social investigators. Media. Those, those are That's now from the no, investigator no, that side. That is now the investigation side. Mm -hmm. There is a branch. Yeah. There is a branch that is mm -hmm. trained mm -hmm. specifically on how to okay. uh, handle electronic evidence. Suspect statements. Uh, prosecution should prove three ingredients. Use of threatening words. Intentions to stir up ethnic hatred or having regard to all the circumstances. 
ethnic hatred is likely to be stirred up, commits the offense through the use of a computer system. So those are the essential, yes. ingredients. essential ingredients. Yes. That are required. Yes, the exact action. Yeah. And now the intention yeah. to incite mm -hmm. or stir, mm -hmm. and now th what you're talking about the evidence itself, yeah. Yeah. the electronic evidence, mm -hmm. so if it's recorded, that kind of evidence. Okay. So I don't know what James, what you tell someone like me. How would you encourage me to actually take my phone or my gadget, mm. my recording gadget too, and leave it at the police station and say, "Do here, to Rudik Chukwa Badai." That's what we were saying. It's about uh, when carrying out investigation, yeah. you need to make the witness understand mm -hmm. why you are doing that. Yeah. Why? you need because if mm -hmm. somebody goes to complain mm -hmm. definitely he he has been hurt or he's mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. happy about he's what yes. yeah. so you must explain to the person that if you want us to prove this case allow us to do it because we'll return the phone at mm -hmm. the end of the day. Mm -hmm. and sometimes it does not take long it will be returned or sometimes the problem is sometimes people insist that it be used mm in court yeah and also you you have to make the person realize that there are benefits mm -hmm. to live in that phone you're presenting you're preventing maybe genocide yes mm -hmm. yes yes definitely so i'm seeing some of these uh, do i call them the offenses so there's hate speech and then um there's a fine not exceeding one million or three years in jail or both so you can mm -hmm. get both yes yeah so um, then there's offense of ethnic or racial contempt. Do we find that in Kenya, racial contempt? Yes. You do? Um, I can give you the recent example of uh, this recording that was done at uh, this club. Um, ah, yes. Al uh, alchemist. Uh, yes, alchemist. Yes. Uh, that is uh, racial. Uh, racial. Oh, <laughs> we live in interesting times. So again, it's also fine of not more than one million or five years imprisonment in case of a corporate entity. This is what I wondered, why a corporate entity, but it's a law, I'm just wondering aloud, why would I be charged one million and a corporate entity is also charged one million? <laughs> Should they not be getting more? <laughs> okay, and then there's threat to subject another person to any detriment, 200,000 or imprisonments for a term of 12 months or both. And then failure to comply with a notice by the commission. What, is, what does that mean? Which commission? The national cohesion? Yes. So they call me and I refuse to... When, when uh, they summon you, they call you to enable them yeah. to investigate. And you refuse to go. To ah, you get uh, I'll give you the example of... Uh, um, is it two years ago? There's this vernacular artist who made a recording insulting a particular community. Mm -hmm. uh, the National Cohesion, uh, the, the, the Commission, which is established under the Act, mm -hmm. actually had to summon the artist mm -hmm. to come and explain what he meant. Yes, that now that is what... That is now being, uh, you, you've, you, you've been called, you've, you've been, been summoned. summoned. So, akikata analipishwa pesa. Akikata, yes, there can are be no charged. consequences mm. for refusing. Yeah. Okay. Then hindering or obstructing a commissioner staff of NCIC. So what does that mean? Like they come to me and... They come to you and uh, you prevent them from carrying, carrying out, out their, their investigation. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Insulting language towards a commissioner staff of NCIC and then giving false or misleading information to a commissioner and staff of NCIC. This must be common. In <laughs> times of politics, because everybody is out to, uh, for their own interest, so they can say anything against another person. It's true. Yeah. So then you're brought for a file and you're told somebody here gave false information. Again, you go back into your file, decision to charge and look at the ingredients. Yes, yes. you have to look at the ingredients. Yeah. Yes. You might be prosecuting uh, an, an offense which is not there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so as you wind up, maybe, how, why is it important? I like asking this question as well to every council that comes. Why is it important that we have separation of mandates? Why is it important that there is a guide that, that sort of talks about decision to charge? 
and why is it important to me as the citizen that these processes are followed? Well, you know, we have a history also, yeah. and we also benchmark from the good practices. Mm -hmm. And that's why we created, the, the, court, the law created an independent office which can discharge the without impartiality. You know, initially, the arresting officer could be the investigator and the prosecutor, you see. There's already an interest. There's not an objective process of carrying out the work. Because this person goes with the mind that I arrested you that crime. I have to convict you by all means, whether you're innocent or not. Yeah. So th that's why this need for that, an independent body to carry out the work of prosecution. But it's not that, you know, it is all, there must be cooperation and coordination yeah. because we cannot be able to do our work mm -hmm. without the other. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's a about symbiotic relationship. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Uh, you've heard about the popular phrase, wheels of justice. Uh, it's important now to have distinct uh, functions to enable these wheels of justice role. Um, you have to have the investigating body mm -hmm. do its investigation, concentrate on the investigations. Mm -hmm. You have to have the prosecution body to carry out the prosecution, evaluate the file, uh, ensure that it is ready for prosecution and then you have to have the judiciary to make a decision on whatever has been presented. So everybody has their, it's important that everybody keeps their mandate so that the Mwananchi's interest is protected. Yes. So this all, this is for the good of me, the Mwananchi, yes. that everybody is doing their job. Yes. So the risk yes. is when everybody, when one person is doing all this, then there's no objectivity. There's no objectivity. Yeah. Um, it, 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 it can lead to a lot of mad mm. um, issues. Yeah. Uh, you, you need to concentrate on one issue for you to present a perfect Or do what, you're, you're, do what is within your expertise. Yes. You can't be everything. You can't do everything. Yeah, I get surprised when people actually go and say, to read you when, like mm. James says, the, investi the, arresting the arresting officer is the investigator, mm. is the prosecutor and maybe the one driving the van to take you to prison. <laughs> ah. <laughs> yeah. So I don't think we can exhaust this topic on hate speech. There's a lot to talk about and there's a lot we don't know as well as citizens. Okay. Yes. And we are quite grateful that we have some, uh, some, some leadership that comes from you. So um, we have this book. It's called The Quick Reference Guide on Key Definitions and Ingredients of Hate Speech and ethnic uh, contempt under the National Cohesion and Integration Act 208. So like uh, James has said, they work, it's a symbiotic relationship. They are investigators, they could be the police, they could be the ESCC, they could be the NCIC. So this one is under the NCIC Act and it shows what is needed. Uh, so there. And it's quite detailed and very simple to understand. Uh, we may have to upload it so that you see uh, exactly what we've been talking about, the ingredients needed to make the decision to charge. Again, you'll see what is required of you as a citizen. For example, you had me ask about uh, in, uh, what is it, reporting a case. I, I have to take my phone in cases of electronic uh, evidence. I have whatever gadget, it doesn't have to be a phone, but I have to give it up to the investigator so that they can use to extract the information. So you need to trust the process for us to see these cases go to court and get um, decided. Or sometimes, like uh, James and Peter have said, people can decide to go into a plea bargain or diversion in the cases of hate speech. Because like the national cohesion, the name stands for cohesion. We are looking for, for harmony, peace and <coughs> harmony in all this. But again, we need to stop hate speech. So you'll see what, uh, what it entails to make the decision to charge. You'll see the, the offenses and, and what, what you can be the, you know, the, the fines and the, and, the, and the sentences that are there for these offenses. Again, I repeat, there's plea bargain and there's diversion, in as much as we have this. And uh, I, something very interesting, you cannot give false information, so don't take yourself there to give false information because you can get into trouble for it. There's something that actually talks about it. And then there's, uh, you can't, uh, 
you are when you're summoned again there's something about it you need to go and, and explain yourself to the investigative officers and of course now we go into again uh, admissibility of electronic and digital evidence we live in a technological advanced world and uh, all this a lot of things have gone online and so we need to know what to check off in, in case of uh, giving evidence digitally and the most interesting thing again you've learned today are the six certificates needed under section 106 b that sort of uh, gives credibility and integrity to your evidence to your digital evidence so when you go when you go through this book I'll, i'm going to upload it you're going to see the six uh, certificates needed to just confirm that whatever you're giving is foolproof and of course the people handling also handle it very well and then there are conditions and admissibility you'll see that and so um this is going to be uploaded you're going to see what entails the, the definitions the guide and what it entails to prosecute a hate speech case so i want to just check what is online before we wind up so uh look guide asks what is the difference between hate speech and defamation <laughs> at least i asked the thing what what uh, the freedom of speech and hate speech but someone has, uh, is educating us further and asking the difference between hate speech and defamation <laughs> defamation yeah. hate speech mm. you know you it's up uh, hatred mm. among communities mm -hmm. among defamation is actually a personal yeah. issue and oh. that's it why we subjective defamation are handled mm -hmm. in civil mostly yeah. because it's something which defames an individual mm -hmm. not defames an entire community ah, okay. yeah. I get the difference. and that's why in defamation the recourse is always to look for compensation mm -hmm. yeah. oh, okay. All yes, right. uh, defamation is more subjective hate speech can be in the realm mm. uh, against the community, against the nation. Mm. And I think I remember somebody asked in one of our, uh, on these uh, platforms, is defamation, and is it criminal? Um, actually, it, it used to be criminalized, mm -hmm. but uh, that section was declared unconstitutional. Okay. And that I know. All right. Yeah, okay. So Luke asks, I don't know that you can do this, give people examples of people in Kenya who were prosecuted due to hate speech and the results of the case. <laughs> Somebody is asking for a report. <laughs> is that something you can talk about here? Uh, the report. No, like people, an example of someone, say, who has been prosecuted uh, due to hate speech. They, there's data on that, mm -hmm. uh, which is really easily and readily available. Okay. Yes. All right. Okay, I think we shall come to a close of this. Thanks, Luke. Thanks, Nelly. Thanks for, for being with us and asking the questions you've asked. Of course, you can continue engaging with us and we'll let you know how um, we can respond. But I will upload this document just for further discussion and engagement online. And feel free to ask questions from the document as well. So it's been a great discussion, at least for me. I, I, I'm trying to understand this hate speech and uh, what it entails to prosecute a hate speech case. Like I said, we're in the period of elections. We are still going to talk about hate speech. We're going to still talk about uh, what not to do, what not to say. But it is my hope and prayer that we can go back to our morals and our values and decide just not to engage in hate speech. Let us have a different story this time round so that uh, elections do not, are not marred by ethnic hatred and uh, a lot of hate speech. It's a charged season. Uh, you don't have to be as charged as a season. You can be sober and campaign soberly and still get the results you may that may come out it's not what you want but we'll see the results that come out so i want to um, end the program and wish you a very good weekend and let's catch up again next week like i said you're going to just talk about elections and all the nuances about elections in this period and uh, let's see what we discuss next week keep and keep engaging and of course invite a friend invite a friend to engage with us and ask questions uh, thank you so much gentlemen unless you have thank final you. words Kenyans are always like, and finally, <laughs> and finally, <laughs> anything? No, uh, um, my final one will just be, let us uh, campaign responsibly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Finally. Uh, I'll go the same way. Yeah. <coughs>
that what we need, we need responsible citizens. Yeah. Because that is what will prevent this kind of what we call the hate speeches. Yeah. If the members of the masses are not entertaining, mm -hmm. are not being carried away by what the politicians say during the camp campaigns, mm -hmm. like in this election period, then there'll be, there'll be a change of culture, yeah. even from the politicians. Yeah. They'll be telling the members, the masses, what they need is to bring development, mm -hmm. not what they want to hear to excite mm -hmm. them for no reason. Mm -hmm. Whip up the emotions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Thank you, and I wish you well in the day and in the week ahead. God bless you.